Lil Boosie manager explains the Duke 093 and 2D Rob beef with Charleston White. To figure out what happened, make sure you watch the whole video. If you're not subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe. Hit that like button, comment down below. Let's get right into it. You know, Boosie's managers, they knew that Duke wanted to take a Uber. He was going to take the Uber XL and get dropped off right in the VIP where all the security guards were. Because where the ride share and the Ubers drop off is a different part of the parking garage than where Boosie parked and where Duke had to park. So the place they told Duke to park was far away from anything. I mean, if anybody parked there, it could have happened to anybody. Like for real, anybody could have got jumped or ran up on, right? And so now the fact that if he would have took the Uber, it would have took him to the main entrance where they had all the cameras and literally had pro like the guards right there so that if somebody was to get dropped off, then they will walk him into the entrance. They'll check the ticket right there. And then leaving, leaving too, it's like all the security would be there making sure everybody quickly gets out and into their Ubers and off so that the traffic jam doesn't cause any problems. And so that's another main reason. And when it was time for Boosie and Duke, the jeweler, to go to that concert, well, remember they told you that uh, Duke, the jeweler, said that he had to follow Boosie to the concert. And Boosie said this in his Vlad TV interview when he was asked about exactly what happened that night to Duke, the jeweler, in the parking garage and everything. Well, before the parking garage, they had to get to the concert. And to get to the concert, Boosie sent two drivers, two members, to Duke's hotel so that Duke could actually follow them because he was behind the GMC truck. So he sent two people so that the drivers uh, could show him the way. But once they got to that gate, that's when the play was ran because the goal was to basically get Duke to the concert. And then once he gets to the gate, everything could take care of itself because of the fact that they already had it planned where they weren't going to let him in the gate. They were going to find a way. They are going to say something wrong with his plates. The truck's too big. And basically, they, they're making it to where he, has, he shows up to the concert. But it's like, since he's already there, he's not going to turn around and leave. It's like Duke drove all the way from Chicago down to Houston. And he already did the dice game. He already did everything. He brought all of his jewelry out. He literally just spent all night cleaning all the jewelry and literally fixing up all the money with the 600K he just won from the dice game. And he was spending all night making sure the bills were all facing the same way, making sure all the hundreds was next to each other, the 20s and the 50s. And then he even ironed some of the bills. But see, the thing is, is that once they got to that parking garage, then they knew that he was going to separate, but they knew he was not going to go home. They were like, he didn't come all the way out here just to turn around and go home all because of uh, he can't park next to Boosie's GMC truck. So they knew that he wasn't going to do all that work and then just decide to bail out last second and not go to the concert. So they basically set it up in a way they say, wait, hold a minute. I know another place you could park. You could go park over here. And when the pictures came out of exactly what the parking spot looked like, it wasn't even inside the parking garage. It was like the very, very end of the parking garage and the roof had already ended. So it was almost like a side lot, like a side parking lot that's like literally next to the parking garage. So it's not even like underneath, like if it was to rain, Duke's car would get, uh, you know, like it would rain all over his car. But where Boosie was parked the roof was all underneath it, so they were actually inside the parking garage. So they kind of made it to where they gave Duke the spot that was way over at the end, like literally right by the road and right by the sidewalk. So if anybody was driving by and recognized him, or if anybody was walking by and they could try to grab his chains, they could try to grab his money, they could try to jump in his whip, his truck, they could try to run off with everything. So it's really no surprise that everything happened the way it happened because they wanted him to get to the concert. And then they knew that due to the way that they were going to do the whole parking situation with the security and the valet, they know that he's not going to come all the way that far just to end up, you know, canceling the whole plan. So 
he went through with staying at the concert. And, you know, that's a that was just a little mistake due to the fact that Boosie and them and everybody had already really actually turned their back and betrayed him at that point because he was no longer able to move as a function as one unit. And, you know, when they singled him out like that, that's when they sent the wolves at him, because at that point they were like, well, check this out. If, you know, if Duke wasn't going to, uh, you know, give up all the bread and give up all the money, like they were going to find some way. They must have asked him to donate a lot of money and maybe he didn't want to donate cash and maybe he was going to donate that that piece of jewelry that he said he was going to make for Boosie. So I guess maybe they might not have been, you know, completely satisfied with the fact that he was going to give Boosie a whole $250,000 chain in peace, but maybe Boosie wanted the cash money instead, or maybe he wanted more than that. So it's make me, make me kind of think allegedly that if he was going to make Boosie a piece anyways, and Boosie needed money, but then he ends up getting shot and robbed for all of his jewelry and money anyways, it made me think that they must have asked Duke for a lot of money to donate to Boosie because Boosie was down bad and needed a lot of bread. Remember, he said out of his own mouth, he needs a million dollars in 48 hours. So they must have asked Duke to front him that. And, you know, when Duke said, I'll give you this chain and, you know, that's about it. But then that's when they, you know, basically turned their back on him. So I feel like the whole thing allegedly could have just been a setup, you know, and so condolences to go out to uh, Duke the Jeweler, condolences to the family and everything like that. And so, you know, there's a lot of people that are still trying to piece this whole thing together and try to figure out exactly what happened. And the fans right now, they're still trying to mourn the loss of Duke. And so before Boosie even goes to Chicago to do a show or a concert or anything like that, the OGs have to get the chains back and find the Louis Vuitton bags that had, you know, close to a million dollars worth of jewelry and stuff that was from the display case for Duke the Jeweler's jewelry shop. So if they don't get that back yet, then, you know, Boosie's not going to be able to come to do any of his shows there. Like, he can't do anything, um, you know, at the Bulls Stadium until they get close to everything back that belonged to Duke and, and whatever he lost in that situation because technically... He was supposed to be watched over by Boosie and his team, and they're supposed to make sure that nothing goes wrong because they invited him. You know, at the, at the end of the day, it's like you can't be, you can't leave behind somebody when you invited them. You either go move as a team or not. So you gotta make sure to be uh, to let it be known. Like Duke didn't think that he was gonna end up kind of getting left behind or betrayed, or you know what I mean. So when they betrayed him. He was just like just as shocked as anybody else would be when they find out they got betrayed. And once he got to that parking garage, you know, if he could do it all over again, I'm sure he would decide to, you know, go home, go back on the road and get back to Chicago. But at the end of the day, he tried to go out and support Boosie and everything at the concert. And so now it's like before Boosie uh, goes quick to, to come and uh, go anywhere over there. He, they're going to have to get the differences settled. They're going to have to squash the beef before he goes out there because they're not going to want him to go to Chicago. They're going to tell him that he has to check in. And when he goes to check in, they're going to say, you're not allowed. So he has to turn around and leave. So it's like right now, if he goes, it will be wasting a trip just due to the fact that once he gets there, or lands there, or drives there or whatever, they're going to be waiting for him and they're going to tell him to turn around and he has to leave because he doesn't get a pass no more because of the situation that happened where basically he didn't give Duke a pass to, to slide with him to the concert and park at the parking spot next to him. They made him go into a separate whole area that didn't even have a gate and anybody, any goons can pull up and do whatever. And so that's basically what happened. And so that's why they took away his pass to be able to Rome, Chicago, like he can't go downtown or go to the, the Nike store or anything like that. Um, and it's just the way it is, you know, for right now. Maybe it'll change later once Boosie tries to like, you know, make the right uh, to right the wrongs because he's got to come out and apologize and try to get the chains back. Like right now, they probably melted down all the gold and the chains because 
Duke the Jeweler is a real jewelry businessman. So he has real gold and real precious metals and silver and all that stuff, right? And so whatever is they think is valuable in the chains, they're going to melt it down and sell it to cash for gold. They're going to try to sell the pendants and the diamond stuff to the pawn shops, even though the jewelry with the diamonds in it isn't going to sell as much as if it was like original. So it really they, it depends, but they're going to try to get the fast money because remember, Boosie needed a million dollars in 48 hours. So everything that they're doing, they're probably even trying to sell off the Louis Vuitton bags, but that's why the OGs, they're trying to go out there and find out like all the places that they done sold and melted down Duke's jewelry and his bags at so they could go back to them and let them know that they need it back because it belonged to Duke and they got to retrieve everything back and make the wrongs right. And so, you know, that's why they're telling Boosie that he has to do it. He has to be on standstill and he has to basically um, chill out and not go to Chicago and he can't do his concert there until they get the whole thing resolved because everybody is still looking at him as the bad guy in the situation because the way it's looking like it's almost as if he, you know, he knows what was going on. And so that's something you got to keep in mind and understand because at the end of the day, everybody was, you know, basically saying that, um, that Boosie was in the wrong at that time. And that he should have, like, you know, from the dice game and at the concert, he should have had Duke right there with him because they knew that he came there by himself. And so that's the reason why, like, just knowing that off the bat and knowing that, you know, it's, he's, it's a far away from home. Like, Houston to Chicago is a long way. That's almost like a 15, 16-hour drive at least, maybe even 20 hours. And you got to understand that, they knew that he was going to come out there with all that money and all that jewelry. So it's like, do you think it was a planned thing? Do you think that they try to tell him to come out with all the jewelry and money? And then pretty much it just led to him doing like a robbery that and he ended up getting hit up at. And so that's why that parking garage footage is going to be crucial and everything like that, the body cam. So so because of Lil Boosie and his situation on Duke 093, the jeweler and everything that happened at the concert, it's like if Boosie goes to Chicago, he's probably not going to be able to go there because they're going to kick him out. They're going to probably be like, you know, want him to check in. So due, because of the fact that the OGs, they know that um, they done singled out Duke and everything like that. So, you know, to make sure everything goes smoothly, like if Boosie does a concert in Chicago, he's going to have to go and check in and he's going to probably have to go and make sure that the water is cool and everything. And that it's not it's not going to be a situation where it's like he's not welcome and then he pulls up, you know. So like any show that was in that was planned for him, he's going to have to double check and make sure it's, it's not going to get canceled and anything like that, because you got to understand that and keep in mind that um, he was right there with Duke 093, like he was supposed to be the person that um, was showing the hospitality, taking care of him. I mean, they did invite him there. So it's like because if, if Boosie would have got invited to Chicago by Duke or something like that or somebody else, you know, even an artist, then, you know, they didn't make sure that he's got the security around him and everything. They're going to use their resources to help them. And that didn't happen with Duke. They didn't show him the same type of respect back. And so that's why they're telling him, like, no, Boosie can't come to Chicago. A lot of the people from Chicago, a lot of the Duke, the jeweler fans and stuff like that, they are actually coming out and saying that they're like, you know what, we don't even want to see Boosie. Like, nobody's trying to.